gang, this is Paul with Stud Pack. Welcome back to our channel. I'm actually standing in my mom's brand new curbless shower. All that's left to do before she can use it is to install a few grab bars and the shower trim. Now Jordan and I have had our YouTube channel for almost three years and we realized, you know what? We have never done a shower trim installation video even though we've done a bunch of showers on this channel. It's kind of second nature to us, but for the average homeowner, they bring the box home for their shower trim and they open it up and now they're wondering, did I buy a shower trim kit or did I buy a jet engine? Because there's like 30 parts in there. So in this video, we're going to show you step by step how to install all these parts plus all the details in between so you get a professional quality job. Let's jump right in. The first step you got to do, you got to shut off the water to the shower, right? Now this valve that we put in has integral stops right here and the beauty of these is you don't have to go hunt down your water meter or your water main to shut off the whole house. These are off, it just takes a flat bladed screwdriver all the way clockwise. It's gonna turn off the hot and the cold. And the beauty of that again is, if I ever have to service the valve, I can turn those off and repair the valve. So now that we know the water is off, I say we start over here with the shower assembly and work our way out of the shower and do the trim on the valve last. Now during the shower rough end, you're gonna have a fitting like this this one is a test plug made by Shark Bite. We're going to show you a little bit more of it later. Or your plumber is probably going to use a piece of half inch pipe with a cap on it. You got to leave those in for now because what you want to do is grab a marker and make a mark on that pipe, or in this case on this test plug, flush with the tile. And see that? I marked, I made a mark on here, flush with the tile. Now I can remove that and we're going to show you why that mark is so important. Now we've got our mark on our test cap and we're going to come back to this later and why it's so important to us in this application. If you're putting up a regular shower arm like this, you don't need that measurement because this arm is going to screw right into that drop ear 90 that's in the wall. What's a drop ear 90? It's the fitting your plumber used to transition to the pipe going to the bottom of that fitting and then it has female pipe threads in it to accept this and it should be attached to a block. Ours is attached with three screws. It's very strong. On this arm right here, see how there's a long section and a short section? This long section is made for the wall. I've seen it too many times put in like that. It works, but it looks a lot better like that. So you're gonna put some Teflon tape on there with your discussion, and let's get it started in that drop ear 90. All right, I'm started. So now that it's started in the threads, you're gonna get your channel locks, and you're gonna put them right here, right? and you're gonna scratch up your finish. Nope, get you a nice pair with a vinyl grip, put it inside, and now you can spin that thing until it's tight and you're not gonna damage the finish and you're not gonna bend it. But we're not gonna use a shower arm. What we're gonna do, we're gonna use this 90. It's gonna go up here with a hose attached with a nice handle with a pause button and all the massage so you can get all over and all the nooks and crannies and take a nice, nice. bath. Yep. So our first step in putting this 90 up is to determine how long a piece of pipe we need from that drop ear 90 to go into here. If it's too long, this is going to be off the wall and you're going to have a gap between here and the tile. If it's too short, you might have a leak. So we're going to use the mark we made on here to help us to determine the length of the pipe nipple we need to install this perfectly. All right, let's head over here to our workbench here in the bathroom. Now remember, there's the mark we made that is flush with the tile. Here's the fitting that's going to be flush with the tile. So in order to engage these threads, the pipe fitting has to come out a little bit farther. So I'm going to grab my tape measure and let's just see how long of a pipe nipple we're going to need. All right, I'm at about three inches. Now it never happens to me. I'm usually at something like three and five eighths, three and a quarter, a pipe nipple that you can't buy because these come in half inch increments. So I think a three inch is going to work. If you're in that in-between zone and you need a custom length pipe nipple, I'm going to show you two tricks. The first one is to get a fitting that's called a male adapter. It's half inch here for copper and half inch pipe thread on that end. And you can see what I'm doing here. I can make this piece any length I want. And once I solder these on there, I can make a pipe nipple any length I want. What I've also done is bought a pipe nipple too long. Say I needed one three and a quarter inches long. I'd buy a three and a half inch pipe nipple, cut off a quarter inch, and then re-thread that in. That's kind of a pain. You gotta hold the pipe without damaging the other threads, and you need pipe threading equipment. So this one is pretty easy, and most people are able to solder pipe. But since we think this nipple's gonna work, let's get some of our Blue Monster pipe thread tape, put it on each end, and see if we can get this thing on the wall with no problem. 
We've got our nipple started in our 90, and I'm going to put pipe thread on this end. I'm going to show you how I do it. I'm going to get it started, and I'm going to hold that little part with my left thumb, just like that. I've got my pipe tape in my right hand because I'm right-handed, and i got a pretty good grip on that between my thumb and this finger. And I just go around. One, two, and I'm going to go three. Break it off. Now we're almost ready to put this in the wall, but there's this part to deal with. Which way does it go? Well, it does matter. You see how there's that ridge formed in it? That goes into the fitting and it keeps it centered within the fitting. And this piece is important because you wouldn't want this to scratch your tile as you're tightening. And if I put this on the other way, well now this pipe might be too short because now we've added thickness here and you're gonna have a big gap. So it goes that way and we're ready to go. I'm gonna get it started and I'm gonna use my same trick Oh, no, I'm not. This actually came with a special tool to take the place of the handles, right? Yep. All right, let me get it started. We're going to grab that tool and show you what it's all about. All right, that's hand tight, and I'd like to get one, at least one, but I'd love to get two more turns on that. And this kit comes with an installation tool just like this. At first, I thought it was some kind of nozzle, you know, so you can get a high-pressure shower. And the end is designed to accept a quarter-inch Allen wrench. And this is an installation tool to help you tighten this without putting a tool on that and damaging your finish. So I'm gonna tighten that, put the Allen wrench in there for additional leverage, and let's see if I can go two more. I think that's gonna be it. Yeah. I'm gonna leave it like that. I feel pretty good about that. So let's take this off, and now we're ready for our next step. We get the drill into our brand new tile. Now the very first part of the instruction says that your shower head needs to be mounted at a height so that there's plenty of slack in the hose when it's at the highest and when it's at the lowest. The shower head mounts to this holder on this bar, and of course, this is adjustable. And Jordan and I kind of went back and forth, and we like this height. The center of the bar is at this grout line. And a couple things we wanted to point out. We got the hose connected. One end has a hex nut like that. It goes up here at, the, at this 90. The other end has this tapered nut, and that's important because that is what holds this on the holder. And the orientation of this holder is Important also, see that little silicone tab in there? That has to point down because just like this is tapered, the inside of this is tapered as your holder. If I did it the other way, it's not going to go in. So that's correct, and this thing's pretty cool. It's got this joystick. The center position is locked, right? It won't move, but up or down, and we can move this anywhere we want. Now, I'm six foot. If I put it there, that's high enough for me to take a shower. Or, at the bottom position, it's low enough where my mom can grab that if she's seated on a bench. So now that we know our height, let's grab our two brackets and mark our hole locations in the tile. Now remember, you can put this anywhere you want. If you're eight feet tall, you can put it up there. You can put it down here, put it on the right, whatever is comfortable for your situation. So now that we know what we want to do, it's time to drill some holes. So I'm gonna hold the top bracket in place like that. I'm gonna remove the bar and Jordan's gonna come in here and mark the tile through those two holes. And we're gonna mount the top bracket, put the bar back, get our bottom bracket position, mount the bottom bracket. All right, bud, nice job. Let's drill those and mount this one. Now we're gonna show you two different mounting techniques. We're gonna use an anchor for the top one and in the bottom one, we have blocking so it'll be very easy. Let me head outside, get my drills, and we'll mount this top bracket. Ready to drill our holes. Now what I used to do, I take a center punch and I would chip away the glaze on the tile and that would give me a starting point for a masonry bit. But several years ago, I upgraded to a quarter inch diamond core bit. There it is, available at the home centers. It does a beautiful job, check it out. I've got a damp rag. I'm gonna use it to help keep the bit cool as I drill. I'm gonna start at an angle. Just using my fingers as a guide until I get started. Right, you can see I started right here. I got a little starting point made. So I'm going to put the drill back, and then as I drill, I'm going to rotate up until I get a horizontal position and finish drilling all the way through. And there we go. Now I'm through to the backer board. I'm just going to finish drilling all the way through the backer board. 
All right, I think that little plug is clogging up the bit. So let's go to our workbench and we'll show you how to clear that. It's got this little opening right here. That's like a dust ejection port. I'll take my little screwdriver, push the plug in, and then you can see all that dust is coming out right there. Because it'd be impossible to get it out that way, right? Yeah, cool. So you just shove it in deeper and it comes out that little area. All right, let's drill our second hole. All right, now that both holes are drilled, let's talk about the anchors we're gonna to use to attach the top bracket. Now the hardware kit comes with this type of anchor, and to me, that's a drywall anchor. I think there are much better options for tile and masonry, and I have two in my hand. This green one, I love, it's called a trilobe anchor, and this one is made for concrete and masonry products as well, and that's made by Toggler. So I think we're gonna use this one today, just because I'm running out of these green ones. And we'll put a link in the description to both of these anchors. They're great to have in your toolbox for anchoring items into masonry. I'm just going to use the butt end of the screwdriver. We are ready. Now I'm going to be honest, gang. That top hole is perfect. The bottom one skated to my left a little bit. Not too much, like an eighth of an inch, but it's fine. Because the way the holes are made in the bracket, I can adjust that thing to left or right and up and down. So I've got it perfectly plumb. Let's put our bar back on there and measure for our bottom bracket, which is gonna go right into blocking. Alrighty gang, almost done with this side. We slid our protective covers over the bracket. We screwed to the wall. No tools required when putting these on. The bar slides over the end, and here's how it attaches. It comes with this plastic part right here, this gray one, and it's threaded on one end. That threaded part goes towards the open end of the pipe. That is so this decorative cap that's also threaded can screw onto there and seal the end of the pipe. We already did the bottom one just like that. Look how nice that looks. So now let's do the top. Take the supplied screw, put it through there, drop that in, and tighten up that screw. And tighten up that screw. The bottom one was easy. No. Nope. All right, let's see what's going on. All right, I got it started because now it's squeaking. The squeaking is just the screw rubbing against this plastic insert. I just got a long way to go. I sure hope I didn't forget a part <laughs> like this. That would be terrible. All right, that's good enough. I don't want to break anything. Put our cap on there. And this side is done. All right, nice job, bud. Now let's get the trim on the valve and we're almost ready to take a shower. All right, let's make this mess right here look beautiful. Remember, this is called our valve body or our rough end valve. This black square plastic piece is called a plaster guard and it basically forms a boundary and that's where the tile setters are supposed to stop. And that leaves you access for your stops right here. And as you can see, this one got kind of shoved in right there. For me to pull that out flush, like this left-hand side, I'd have to cut this tile. I'm not gonna do that. I've got access to the screws in the valve body for my trim ring, just like that. So I'm gonna leave it where it is. So my first step is to remove this bonnet nut. Remember, we're off right here. I might get a little water coming out because we tested the system. Let's see what happens. We're gonna save this for later. This test plug, I bet when I take it out, I'm gonna get some water. Why don't you hand me that orange rag, buddy? Is it close by? And this isn't threaded in, it's just pressed in. There we go, a little bit of water, no big deal. Just make sure it's all clean inside. Now sometimes, you can get a shot in here, Jordan, this top hole will have like a screen on it. On this valve, you're supposed to remove that screen. First thing we put in is this adapter assembly. How do you know if you're supposed to remove the screen or not? Well, our instructions say to remove it, so always refer to the instructions. All right. And to me, the only way this goes in is if the screen is missing. To me, the screen is protecting any debris from going in this line for the shower during the test phase, but I don't know. So the first piece that goes in is this one. It's called an adapter assembly. It's got a couple of O-rings. One's gonna be your hot side. The other's gonna be your cold side. And it does not matter on this part which way it goes. So I'm grabbing onto a little handle right here. We're gonna push it right in the back into those two holes. I'm in. I'm going to pull off that little handle. Just like that. That handle is trash. 
I'm going to use my thumbs. I'm going back inside. I'm just making sure it's seated all the way, and it is. Our next step is the valve assembly. I'm going to put my glasses on because it says right here on the side. Can you catch that, Jordan? It says hot side. Can you see that on the black part? So that the left is the hot side. And we've got these little detents right here on each side. And they line up with this part in the valve body. So I've got my detents lined up. Hot side's on the left. I'm going to push it in. Does the hot side need to be on the left? Yes. Why is that? Uh, Oh, you weren't ready for that? No. <laughs> yeah, so it's standard that the hot is always going to be on the left. Just like the vanity we did this morning, the hot's always on the left, right? Every sink ever. Every sink ever. There is one exception, back-to-back -back installations, where the hot can be on the opposite side, but we're not going to get into that. In almost every home, the hot's always going to be on the left. And if you find that yours is piped differently, well, just come back to this point of the video when you fix it, and you'll know what to do. So we got the hot there. Cold there, ready to go. We got our cartridge valve inserted. I'm gonna grab the bonnet nut. Let me go outside and clean this up, bud. I got some thin set on it. That's better. I'm gonna thread that on there. And this is just hand tight. That's it. Now let's put on our trim ring, and then the fun part, we get to adjust the temperature. All right, that's hand tight. We're gaining on it. Our next step is to put this O-ring on here. It's going to go over the valve body. The purpose of the O-ring is to help to center and steady this cover. If I don't have the O-ring in there, put this cover on there, it's going to be like this. It's not going to center itself. And the O-ring helps to do that. We're going to put it on there right behind this bonnet nut, just like that. And you'll see what a difference it makes. See, I've got the resistance of that O-ring. And I'm pushing it back, and there we go. Nice and strong. Oops, what did I forget? I don't know. I gotta turn the integral stops on, right? Oh, right. I caught it. I caught it, barely. All right, hand me that slide of screwdriver, bud. All right, we got our valves on, so we're ready for our cover plate. Slide it on like that. Again, delta at the top. I'm gonna stand up, I'm gonna put these two screws in. All right, that looks fantastic. Now, a lot of you might be wondering about putting some kind of silicone behind the faceplate. It's not necessary. Delta puts a gasket back there, and you wouldn't want a silicone that's on anyway. If you ever had to take this off, it's gonna be a huge mess. So the gasket that comes from the manufacturer is all you need. So now that that's on, we're ready for our handles. First, we're gonna install the big handle. This controls the volume on, off on your water and it goes on in only that direction. And this is pointed to the off on the trim plate. It actually will go on 180 degrees opposite of that, but that looks goofy, because your off is over here. But if you want it up there, you can do that. It's your shower. So we're gonna put it here where it belongs, and now it's time to put on our next three pieces. These are our next three pieces, and in order of how they go on, they call this a stop, the black one. This gray plastic is called the temperature control knob, and this is called the temperature control cover. That looks like a knob to me, but they're calling this one a knob. So we're gonna start with this piece they call the stop. It's the black part with the gear teeth on the outer diameter. And it's got this part with no gear teeth, and right here, there's an H, and right there, there's a C. Is that showing up on the camera? And then in between, are all these indicators. And we have this brass tab on the handle. That acts as a stop for the shoulder right here and the shoulder right here. So if I put this shoulder that's by the H, by that tab, that's the hottest temperature. And if I take it out, come on, and put this shoulder that's by the C, by the tab, that's basically full cold. We're gonna go full hot and try it. If we think it's too hot for my mom, we can take it off and adjust this gear to get the water temperature perfect. So let me snap this in here, get those teeth all meshed. This is the funnest part of these installs. There. Now this temperature control knob, see it has these two flats on it. And this is the part that the instructions don't talk about. That temperature control knob with the two flats goes right here on this valve stem, which also has two flats. The secret is that that valve stem must be turned fully clockwise 
before you snap this on. If it's in the position that I just showed you, right there, and you put this on, you're not gonna get the full range of temperature that this was designed for. You'll never get the water hot enough. So that's my tip of the day. See that gear just comes right out all the time, drives yeah. me crazy. So that's what you're turning right there, yeah. that black. Yep. Fully stem. clockwise. Probably do that before you snap this in, right? Now you're not fooling with this gear. All right, gear's in. I got my D's lined up. Here's my handle. Now you can see this tab on the gray part is hitting this part on the brass. That's my stop, full cold. Now if I go counterclockwise, full hot. Almost 180, well it is, it's 180 degree range of motion. If that little valve stem was not turned like we showed you, you wouldn't get that range of motion and you wouldn't get the hot water. So let's put the screw in there before we snap this on and give it a test. All right, you ready buddy to give it a test? Yep. All right, now we took the shower head off. It's always a great idea to do that. So you purge the line. If there's any trash in there, it's just gonna get blown out. If you don't take it out, that trash could get trapped and block the holes in the shower head or an aerator, something like that. All right, I'm gonna hold this, turn it on, nice. So we're full cold. And I'm gonna turn that, just like I would be if the handle were on there. Go to full hot. And let's see what kind of temperature we get. And that water's pretty hot. I can hold my hand there, but that would be uncomfortable to shower in. And it's definitely too hot for my mom. So we're gonna turn it off and adjust the temperature so this water is not so hot when it's at full hot. Okay, we've removed our screw. I've got my left thumb and I'm holding that gear because I don't want it to move because I got a reference where it is now in order to change it. We're gonna pull this handle off and I think I'm gonna rotate it about, I'm gonna say four teeth clockwise. So now see the distance we moved it? Let's put the handle back on with the screw and give it another test. Hey, dude, your shower's hot. I know, it's about five teeth. All right, we've got our gear moved about four teeth, and let's put our handle back on. Now check it out. It's on, right? But look what happens. It doesn't move. How come? Well, remember, when I took it off, it was in the full hot position. Remember that 180 degrees we were talking about? Now it's back where it was when I took it off, and now I've got the full range of motion. Actually, I can tell it's a little less because we moved that gear. All right, let's try it again, Jordan. Water on, full hot. That made a big difference. Just moving it four teeth, that is a lot warmer. In fact, it's too warm. So I'm gonna try again, and I'm gonna rotate this counterclockwise. What do we say our new temperature rating is? Two teeth. Two teeth. All right, one more try, and then we're gonna snap our cover on. So the instructions say that each tooth you move that gear is good for about four to six degrees Fahrenheit of temperature change. So if you want to use a thermometer and check your hot water, which is a great idea, now you know how to calibrate it based on each tooth being four to six degrees. All right, last step is just to snap on our cover. It was just like that. Now the instructions say to snap this on and then do your temperature adjustment. But you'd have to pull this off every time that's why we did it the way we did it. Now, speaking of taking this off, how do you do it? We're gonna take a slotted screwdriver, put it in right here, perpendicular to this handle. You see that? It came right off. We're gonna go underneath and do the same thing, which popped the top back on. There we go. Pretty easy to come off, but be careful of your finishes. You don't wanna scratch anything. Snap it on. We are done. All right, Jordan, I sure hope you enjoyed that video about how we install shower trim. Some steps are very easy, right? It's just a matter of screwing that hose on or there, but some steps are pretty difficult. Maybe you're struggling with those teeth and getting the temperature right, or maybe you're struggling with drilling a hole in that towel you just put in that your wife picked out and there's no more left. So if this video helps one person, it was certainly worth our time to help you out. So obviously every shower trim kit is gonna be different, right? Just like every ceiling fan is different. So if you have any questions on how to install yours, drop them below in the comments. We read every one of them and we'll try to answer yours as soon as possible. And if you have any of your own tips and tricks on how to install this stuff, drop them down below. And if you got any stories on like a shower disaster you were working on and you couldn't get it figured out, 
let us know below in the comments. And you know what, if your like button is not hot enough, now you know how to adjust that gear, get that like button hot, smash it for us, drop us a comment, ask us a question, and we will see you on our next video.